Oh my Hello, ladies Lord. and gentlemen. Welcome back. Holy fuck, we're back in this. Here we are. Hey, it's Beetle. It's rainy and shit, Beetle and buddy. we have to go what say hi to our grandma. To my grandma. We gotta go. We're, we visited. We're visiting grandma. We're hoping for cookies. Grandma's do, probably do. dead on the second floor bedroom. Just been rotting away the entire time. Oh god. Oh no, she's alive. Please don't go. Don't leave your poor grandma all alone. They come and oh, beat me grandma. when they're when you're gone. Can I get things in my bottles? Ooh, yeah. Hey grandma, thanks for the soup. I have soup. Leave my fucking soup alone. Give me soup, woman. You ungrateful child. I feed you and clothe you, and then when I need you to take care of me, you leave me and let your sister get kidnapped. You're a terrible son. What of it? <laughs> Big pig. Big pig. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. Big pig. Uh, what happened to all the other pigs? I can't pick him up. He too big. What happened to all the other pigs? Last time we were here, there were multiple pigs in that pen. He a heckin' chonker. <laughs> the fucking pig cannibalized the others. That rocks. I love it. Big pig. Yeah, so I got a cannibal pig. Nice things been happening <laughs> here. You better head home early today I'm and don't come out to play until long after the sun is risen. I'm tomorrow. gonna eat that cannibal pig. It's gonna be like bacon that was marinated in more bacon. Don't remember what I am to do. Yeah, I don't know. Like, were you? I thought the to... boat said go talk to your parents. Wait, um, what about that thing around the back? Yeah, I can't. I couldn't get in the boat. Remember? Oh. Oh, we already did that. No, I, I tried and I couldn't get in the boat. See? Are you ready? Oh, well, there you go. Now he's like, let's go. Oh. Okay. I just had to go talk to Grandma and find out that she's uh fucking crazy. It's still fucking like. But she's just gone insane without us being. Ah, there. cranberries. Gotta find out we drove our grandmother insane and now we can go back here. <laughs> you drove your grandmother insane due to loneliness. You were the last, like, like hope she had in this world. And then due to you and your, like, you leaving and your sister getting kidnapped. And then, like, yeah, and then you leaving to go save your sister and thinking that, you know, oh my god, how is this 12-year-old going to survive in this fucking crazy ass world that's clearly dangerous and would kill a 12 year old um she went crazy of loneliness and worry god damn yeah keep shooting away that's what you gotta do one more here we go gee I wonder what could be inside just need to get around. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Fucking finally. Yeah, now try to try. Oh, okay. It's... Wait. The fact that there was a giant stone door there meant that. There was a whirlpool? It's magic! <laughs> Man. Wow, well, this was a fucking useless. Oh! The water's moving! Oh, God. Oh, well met indeed, Jaboon. I am pleased that you are safe. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't fucking yes, speak it seems Ganon has returned. There can be no other explanation. Ja, ba, ba, ja, ba, ba. ja boon. Unfortunately, that is not so. Jaboon, 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 jaboon. Big old lips. The one I have brought with me has no connection to the legendary one, and yet I sense great promise in the courage that this one possesses. Jaboon, 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 jaboon. I do. It is the only way. Jaboon, jaboon, boon, jaboon. <laughs> I love how it just becomes. Jaboon, jaboon, jaboon. It's now become Pokemon rules. Take the pearl. Wow, 
I knew I wasn't fucking crazy. I knew there was a, there was always a giant fish under my island that would give me a giant pearl. Got Nairu's pearl. And that gives us all three pearls. Ah. Oh. Anyways, bye, weird fish dude. Jaboon, 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 boon. So that foul rain and endless night were indeed elements of a curse brought on us by Ganon. Jaboon, jaboon. I believe I have. Jaboon, jaboon, jaboon. What the fuck? Jaboon. Okay, what is he saying? Okay, did you guys like agree to something and you're just not telling me or? Ganon's curse has been broken. Uh huh. As well, we've gathered all the pearls. Are you ready, Eggy? Marked something on your sea chart. Let's go get a quick sale. That'll make a lot of things that faster. That'll make, yeah, that way we're not, you know, doing full fucking episodes of doing, I have nothing but sailing. Eh. Go faster. Oh my god. Go fast. Come okay, on, we go, need to get to, come on, boat, go faster. We need to get to windfall. Wait, and can't you call the wind or something? Yeah, I mean, I can change the. I'm gonna change the wind, but I just need to see where windfall is. Oh. All right, but we gotta go fast. Wind's requiem. Requiem. Wind's requiem for a dream. It's when the wind gets really stupid high on heroin and has a whole weird character study film done about it. That's what? actually really traumatizing. What are you referencing? Requiem for a Dream. Oh. The the really the Requiem for a Dream, me and my friends have decided that it's one of those films you absolutely need to see only once. Yeah. Because of how just disturbing but good it is. It's good enough that it's like one of those films you have to see before you die sort of deal. But because of how disturbing and just like kind of weirdly traumatizing that movie is. Yeah, it you just need to see it the once. And then never again. Um Yeah, no. Especially like Requiem for a Dream is usually the one movie that I'll cite to like kinda help justify that Jared Leto isn't just a bad actor. Yeah. Because he's like Jared Leto is a good actor. Is he though? But when he's playing weird parts when you need a guy to play, like, a weird or very, like, bizarrely unique character, you go for Jared Leto. You don't go for Jared Leto for, like, for, like, a normal guy role or a very specific stylized role like Joker. But if you need a weird guy role, Jared Leto is, is good, which is why probably why he did so well in, um, fuck, what was that one movie where he was a transvestite? There's a movie where he was uh, a transvestite. Yeah, Dallas Buyers Club. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Again, it's a really fucking weird movie. Has Matthew, McCona Matthew McConaughey in it. But because it's a really weird fucking movie, he works in it. Because he's just a really fucking weird guy. I mean, for God's sakes, he's the lead singer of 30 Seconds to Mars. Yeah. Which, like, Loki has songs about talking about, like, not like him, but like the person within the song being person like a personified Jesus and shit like that, and just weird philosophical overtones. Um, so yeah, it would make sense why he's the lead singer of Thirty Seconds. Okay. So that's my opinion about Jared Leto. Um, I just think he's a bad actor. I mean. Because, like, he's, like, good in, like, Mr. Nobody, but Mr. Nobody... No, he's Nobody, not. Yeah, I've seen Mr. Nobody. That, it's a good movie. No, it's not. It's a weird it's movie. It's not a good movie. It's a, one of those bizarrely weird movie, but it's it's not a bad movie. It took a while for me to formulate an opinion on it, because it's hard to understand it. It is really and hard to understand And I officially decided it. that it's not a good movie. It's weirdly hard to understand, Mr. Nobody. Especially because, like, you know, you got the three life... Time. Because it's stupid. Time. I can't tell if it's stupid or if it's actually being Because profound. it's stupid. Like, there's legit moments where I thought it was good out of it. And then there's legit moments where I was like, I am so fucking lost right now. It's not a good movie. 
Do not see Mr. Nobody. I don't know. I think it's worth a watch. It felt. It feels like the directors had an idea for a movie. For, like, three different movies. And rather than pick one, they decided, let's just make three different movies into one and, like, give it some bullshit explanation as to why we did that. But each scenario didn't feel like it was good enough to stand on its own to be a movie. That's why they did it, because they didn't have <laughs> any... They didn't have one good idea, they had three half-baked ideas. They had these three short stories Rather that than they take wanted one to and make. flesh it out, they decided, they, let's give... Let's not well, make vin let's not make like a vignette movie, actually, which are they, things that actually succeed. Like actually, what they had they had two the short Royale. stories and a really fucking weird, creepy story about the guy that was in love with his sister. Um, and then they were like, let's try and tie these together. And they had some weird thing with like humans curing immortality in the future, and he was the last mortal human. But oh, they that, but that, but they, that, that they somehow like to goddamn experience these three lifetimes at the same at, at all at once? Question mark. If they would have picked a goddamn scenario, because the way I thought they were it was gonna be brought up is that these were three possible outcomes made on a choice, but it wasn't. It was just three totally different lifetimes somehow playing out, like possible lifetimes this person could have lived out. Are you gonna try to kill? Why are you trying to kill the seagulls? Because I forgot that the touchscreen operates on different controls than the TV. Oh yeah. I, isn't I'm pretty sure there's a way you can turn that off. I don't care. I was just looking at a chart while we were sailing, and then I was trying to back out of looking at the chart. But yeah. And I was hitting buttons rather than touching the screen. But yeah, no, Mr. Nobody, fucking weird ass movie. You have two different opinions on it. Yeah. You have it's weird ass and it's bad, or and you have the weird ass, but it's worth a watch. I wouldn't say like it's a movie that be, that I'm like, oh my god, it's so fucking ingenious, but it's it's definitely worth a watch and like kind of like be to be yeah, but thought you about. Pot. That's true. <laughs> smoke a lot of pot, and I find just weird shit like that just fascinating. Maybe it's because I'm easily entertained. Maybe it's because you smoke pot. <laughs> Maybe it's because I smoke because I'm a stoner. Yeah. Again, one of my weird guilty pleasure movies is Street Fight uh, Street Fighter Assassin's Fist, which is a like a genuine serious take on like like on formulating um like trying to make the storyline of Street Fighter make sense. And it actually like dude. It is it bad? It's actually low key really good. Like the choreography, the fighting, the story, is it bad? It's, the story. Okay. You it actually. Okay. Okay. Let me explain it. Let me explain it. So you have the, to explain. No, the no, 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 no. The story's no, no. not good. No, the story's fucking terrible. But the That's way. What, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> can't say the story's fucking terrible and they go on to say no, that but it's the way, great. But, it's, but the way they present it makes it, like, worth watching. So the story, of course, is all, like, the, you can tell this was created by Street Fighter fans because they stick pretty true to the mythos and the, like, they bring out some, like, the really deep lore that no typical, like, stu film studio trying to, uh, like, cash in on a gimmick is gonna uh no but anyways so it's the story of ryu and ken when they were training with um goken and it's the story about them learning the way of hado and like the all of the background dealing with goki basically kind of like the beginnings of the main storyline of street fighter mm -hmm. um that kind that um street fighter alpha kind of set up um but they keep they keep flashing back and talking about the uh, story of like Goken and Goki, and then like kind of uh, like relating it to what's going on with Ryu and Ken, with Ryu being the one who's very much you know the way of the Hado, where Ken he's kind of taking the easy route and the shortcuts, the same way that Goki did. It's a joy pendant. Oh gee, this really rare item. Fucking, we just have it here. Whoa. 
but the way that uh, Goki did and kind of like these shortcuts and trying to become stronger than uh, Ryu. But anyways, the way they present it, it's like the most dramatic, over-the-top thing ever. Like, it's so over-the-top and dramatic, you can't take it seriously. Like, there's one part where Goken gets so angry um, because Ken found... Um, Goki's diary, which had like all this like copied information about the Satsi no Hado in it, um, that it just bursts into flames. But like the music, it's all of it is all like cinematic renditions of classic Street Fighter mu uh, music. You can watch the choreography and it flows flawlessly and seamlessly, and you can pick out every single combo that they're doing. Like, er, like, not just, like, just a Hadouken or Shoyuking, but, like, whole combo streams. It's so fucking wild. And it has, and it's all, like, practical effects minus, like, the Hadouken, which is VFX, which is the only, like, special effects. Everything else is pretty much just practical, practical effects and cinematography. But literally, it, the way they present it is this over-the-top dramatic kung fu movie. Kind of like the old, um... Uh, Bruce Lee movies um, and like old Jackie Chan movies so like if you're a fan of that and of Street Fighter it's like the perfect fucking movie especially because it has everything that like these little like just even like the sound effects they got like the sound bites um, like when uh, Goki does like the uh, was it the the raging demon and there's like that there's like one sound effect uh that you want here like when he does the final hit that's in it and it's just like these weird little like cool things that they brought in street fighter that make it like like a very much a uh faithful adaptation of the source material um but no dude it's like it's stupid it's like not like good cinema or like a good movie by any means just because of how over the top and dramatic it is and like clearly like campy and everything but as a fan of street fighter in old like um kung fu movies it's so stupid good like it's definitely worth a watch like you can't like you, you don't like go into it like expecting like a serious movie or anything like, like go into it just expecting something stupid and fun So, did you just do this auction just to give this fucking lady a joy pendant? No, uh, I don't remember exactly how to get the jo the fast sale, so I'm gonna look it up between now and our next episode, but we'll know then. Bye! I literally just went on, like, a five-minute rant about this stupid-ass movie. Yeah, and I was waiting for you to get done. <laughs>